This week we're showing you around Kiev, Ukraine. This was our first time traveling to the country, so we hardly knew what to expect, though we did have an inkling we'd find churches with onion domes, borscht on every menu, and very cheap prices, but that was it. Well, we found some of that, but we also discovered a fascinating city with ornate architecture, massive Soviet monuments, a completely new cuisine, more churches and monasteries than we ever thought possible, and friendly people despite the language barrier. The following is our travel guide to the city. Now let us share with you 20 things to do in Kiev on your next visit. Well, good morning, good morning. New country, new adventure. New country, we are in the number one city of Kiev. And we're so excited to be here. Just a new place for us to visit. Mm -hmm. So we've been here a few days and it is beautiful. Like you can really see the European influence here, but it also has a bit of a Soviet edge. So it's been really fun exploring around. And yeah, in this video, we're going to take you guys around, show you some of the highlights. So come along. 20 things to do in Kiev. So we're about to visit the Golden Gate and learn the story of Prince Sviatoslav. Never heard of him before, but apparently he's a big deal. So we've got our ticket. We paid 40 per person in the local currency, 20 for our cameras. So that's 100. Let's do some yeah, math. That's just, $4. Yeah, that's, uh, US dollars. that's pretty good. Let's go. The Golden Gate was constructed during the 11th century and it was one of three medieval gateways into the city. Though the structure was dismantled during the Middle Ages, leaving few traces of its existence, it was completely rebuilt in 1982 in its current design. Okay, so we just finished climbing to the very top of the Golden Gate, and it was pretty cool because they have different levels with balconies, so you can go out, enjoy the views. But now that we're at the top, there is a church on top of this gate, which is totally unexpected. So we're going to go in and have a look. All right, so next up we are doing St. Sophia's Cathedral right behind me and we've also paid to climb the bell tower. So hopefully we'll get some more amazing views of the city. St. Sophia's is Kiev's oldest standing church dating back to the 11th century. No cameras are allowed inside the cathedral, but you can see some impressive mosaics and frescoes that are still intact almost a millennium later. All right, I hope you guys aren't getting tired of churches and monasteries because we still have lots left to visit. This is kind of like the thing you do in Kiev. So right now we're about to go into St. Michael's Monastery with the Golden Domes, I believe it's called. It's quite the mouthful. This place has quite a sad history as the original cathedral was demolished by the Soviet authorities in the 1930s for having quote unquote no historical value. It was only following Ukrainian independence that a copy of the church was rebuilt and completed in the year 2000. So it was time for lunch. Yeah, so we're right by a major attraction. This is St. Andrew's Church. Uh huh. Ta-da! And we were looking for a place for lunch and we're like, where are we gonna go? Where are we gonna And how did we choose this place? And we saw like this cute cat. Sitting out front. So friendly. Love giving strokes. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So yeah, we were like, that one. Yeah. Cute cat. The we'll cat, eat here. The cat brought us in, basically. <laughs> so lunch is served. Yeah. What did you get? Well, since we're at a French restaurant, I'm getting croque monsieur and french fries. Croque monsieur. And, and I was in the mood for polenta yeah. with caramelized onions and mushrooms. Yeah, and I have to say that in Kiev you can get some pretty good international food. Oh yeah. You're eating a lot of different things. From there it was time for one more church, St. Andrew's, which is a five dome Baroque church that's painted teal and located atop a steep hill. If the design looks familiar, it's because it was designed by Bartolomeo Rastrelli, the same Italian architect who designed the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia. 
so it looks like we won't be able to visit St. Andrew's Church after all. We paid our admission, um, but once we got here, I just noticed all the windows and the doors are closed. So I think we've just paid to like enjoy the views from the terrace, but that's it. We can't actually go inside the church. So we just noticed a sign explaining that the reason the church is closed is that it's currently undergoing restoration work. So yeah, that's too bad. But instead, we're gonna be visiting this like antique slash flea market that happens directly across from the church. Ta-da! So maybe we'll find a few little knickknacks to take back home. I sure hope so. After visiting the market across from St. Andrew's Church, we continued down Andrew's Descent, which is a street lined with cafes, restaurants, traditional craft shops, art galleries, and museums. It's also a great place to shop for souvenirs since they have a wide selection of items. So we've been walking for a really long time and we just noticed that there's a funicular here. Uh huh. So it makes a lot of sense for us to go down that. I hope it's cheap. And we're gonna go down to the waterfront, down yes. to the river. We sure are. The funicular connects the upper town with the lower commercial neighborhood of Podil via Volodymyrska Hill. It's a fun and cheap way to reach the waterfront and save your legs the trouble after a long day of sightseeing. So that was only foreign local currency and you're talking a whopping 16 cents US. So pretty good value and it's a nice short ride. Although it was quite stuffy in there, I was sweating. It's a bit like a sauna. But it's a nice view and actually the station at the bottom is even a little bit more grand than the one at top. So now we're down by the riverfront and I have to say it's much busier than I'd anticipated. There's a lot you can do here. You can walk along the promenade, you can take a river cruise, there's restaurant and dining options. It's just a cool place to hang out. We then continue to Maidan Nizalozhnosti, which is Kiev's central square. When the population has wanted to make their voices heard, this has been the site of protests and rallies. But on the average day, it's just a place where people hang out with lots of vendors, buskers and random performances taking place. All right, mister, we're at Taras Shevchenko Park. Tell us all about it. We sure are. And this is a park I've come to absolutely love because mm -hmm. it's only two minutes away from our apartment. So I've been coming here frequently to go jogging. But every time I come here, I kind of appreciate it a little bit more. There's just a lot you can do. There's a really cool restaurant. You see men at night playing chess in this certain section. There's a lot of couples going out for a stroll. There's some pretty impressive monuments. And yeah, it's just kind of a cool park. I really like it. So these are the coolest park benches I've ever seen. Chilling on one now. So awesome. There's and another we're, one. We're facing in opposite directions. Yeah, so it's, it's perfect cool. for couples, but they also have solo uh, benches. I can hey, sleep. Are, you, are you falling asleep? I can sleep. Now about that restaurant we were talking about, that's Opanas right here. This place specializes in traditional Ukrainian dishes and it's a two-story restaurant built around a tree. The food here was amazing and we also loved that at night they had live music with singing and accordions. On this particular visit, we sampled stuffed cabbage rolls, veal salad, duck brisket and a dumpling soup served in a loaf of bread. So there is my soup and if I kind of touch the bread, it's starting to get a little soft because we've been taking so many pictures. Yeah, <laughs> we have. So I should probably dig in before it starts like seeping through the bread. But yeah, if you have a closer look in here, look at this. It looks so good. Some real mushrooms in there, some carrot, there's dill, a nice broth. I'm so excited for this. I skipped breakfast purposely for Ukrainian food. So here's some of the behind the scenes stuff that we don't always film. We wanted to visit this one particular church that has these catacombs. So we rode the metro to what looked like the closest stop to the church on Google Maps. And then we got off and there was like a highway there and no clear path. So we were like walking along the side of the highway 
Then we hiked through a forest. We ended up on another path. Now we're walking along some abandoned road. And it looks like we're really close to the church, but we can't seem to reach it because it's just blocked off every way we try. So yeah, walking in circles in the middle of nowhere in Kiev. So we started our adventure this morning right by that highway. There's a metro station down over there and we've walked up the mountain. Oh my gosh. As an FYI, the closest metro station to Kiev Pracharsk Lavra is Arsenalna, not Dnipro. And even then you're looking at a 20 minute walk. So next up, we are visiting Kiev Pechersk Lavra, which is like this massive historical and religious complex. They have monasteries, churches, there's caves with the bodies of monks, there's museums. And yeah, there's, there's so to much do. to see. It's like this it's massive huge. space. And admission, we ended up paying the equivalent of three US dollars yeah, in order to be able to enter all the buildings. Exactly, it was 75 per person. Mm -hmm. And where they really got you though was the camera. The camera, 200. so that was 200, which so would be dollars. about eight US dollars, which yeah. is quite pricey to take photos. And, they and they've check. been checking for tickets. <laughs> Every time we enter a church yeah. or a museum, they're like, ticket, ticket. Yeah, so, for yeah. the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We first visited the Dormition Church with its gold domes and beautiful frescoes, followed by the Refectory Church which has more of a Byzantine style. <music> Lastly, we walked downhill and eventually found the entrance to the cave complex. There is no admission fee for this, but you do have to buy a candle at the entrance in order to light your way through the tunnels. If you're a woman, you'll also be able to borrow a skirt in order to enter. Another place we visited in Kiev was the Chernobyl Museum, which documents the 1986 Chernobyl disaster and its aftermath. On the way into the museum, you walk up a set of stairs that displays road signs for the villages that were abandoned as a result of the nuclear accident. The images you see with a radiation symbol signify that the individual died as a result of exposure. From there we walked to the One Street Museum, which is a small museum along Andrew's Descent, which chronicles the story of the street over the years. It's filled with photos, antique postcards, historical documents, manuscripts, and even costumes from the turn of the 20th century. Another attraction we couldn't miss in Kiev is the Motherland Monument, a 62 meter stainless steel statue, which is kind of hard to miss. In one hand, the statue holds a sword, and in the other, the state emblem of the Soviet Union. Now going back to churches because it's been a while, nearby our Airbnb we also visited St. Volodymyr's Cathedral, which is designed in the old Byzantine style and is considered the mother cathedral to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Moving on to food, one place we frequented in our neighborhood was Katusha, which had a bit of a retro vibe and served traditional Ukrainian dishes on a budget. We tried things like borscht, potato pancakes, and dumplings, and we liked that the portions were small enough that you could order an assortment of dishes to sample. For more Ukrainian food, we visited Pervak, which is more of a high-end Ukrainian restaurant. We ended up having a few traditional dishes here, like pork fat spread, pickled herring, shots of vodka, as well as the city's crowning dish, chicken Kiev, which is coated in breadcrumbs and stuffed with butter, garlic, and parsley. Since we're speaking of food, we also have to recommend Georgian cuisine, which is super popular in Kiev. We ate at Mama Manana on two separate occasions and had the biggest feast of feasts. Last but not least, the Kiev Metro is an experience in and of itself, with train cars that rattle and screech to an abrupt stop. Also, fun fact, Kiev is home to the deepest metro station in the world, Arsenalna, which is a whopping 105.5 meters below ground.
So I actually timed the escalator ride at the metro station by our apartment and it takes almost two minutes to reach the exit. So I don't even know how many meters underground we are, but it's really, really deep. We're still going. And that's a wrap for our visit to Kiev. This was our first time traveling in Ukraine, but we were hooked right from the start. This destination felt very underrated with few tourists around, yet we were surrounded by beautiful architecture, there were churches galore to visit, the cuisine was hearty and filling, and everything was super affordable. So if anyone out there is thinking about traveling to Kiev, we hope this video was able to give you a taste of what it's like. Now you guys know the drill. If you have any other suggestions of things to do in Kiev that we may have missed, feel free to share your tips and suggestions with travelers in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels and until next time.